Hello and welcome to another edition of Kraken Cryptic, uh, where today I'm quite excited actually to show you what I believe is, uh, well I've certainly never seen this technique before, um, and um, it really is an absolutely, it's a gem of a technique this. Um, and I've got a puzzle on the screen there that again I'd invite you to study as usual, have a look at it and see whether using your normal method you can make much progress with it. Because um, uh, i tell you something, uh, I couldn't. Um, it really is a horrible puzzle, um, it, except, except it does demonstrate what I'm about to show you. Um, you can see I've, I've asked this software here to rate this, this, this Sudoku. It's rated it as a difficulty factor 100, which is uh, it's out of 100. So this is as hard as it gets. Um, and I'll show you where I got to with sort of my, my attempt at solving it um, using conventional technique. Um, I couldn't fit, fit, fill in any numbers at all, and I could fill in a variety of pencil marks you can see around the grid here, um, you know, trying to locate uh, some sort of logic that would help to take me forward, um, none of which seems to be helpful. Um, and just to give you, uh, in fact, I'll do, I'll do at the end what I'll do is I'll show you what one of the popular online solvers makes of this puzzle and the sorts of techniques it tries to employ to solve it. Now, it, it can solve it in the end, but it has to resort to some very extreme strategies. And they aren't actually necessary if you spot some absolutely beautiful logic right at this point in, in the solve. Okay, so without further ado, I'll, I'll shut up and start to explain how I think you can go about solving this puzzle very, very efficiently from here. Uh, now, the first thing to note is if we look at this block, this 3x3 block here, you can see that we can place neither a 1 nor a 2 in the bottom row of the grid, and it's this bottom row we need to think about first of all. Uh, and this 1 and this 2 are restricting the 1 and the 2 from going into these two cells. Now, if we look at column 5, you can see we already have a 3, 4, and an 8, and a 9 in there. So the missing numbers there are 1, 2, 5, 6, and 7. And you can see that we have the 5, 6, and 7 in row 9. So this cell is in fact a 1 or a 2. Um, now, again, I'd invite you to pause now and see if you can spot the beautiful, beautiful technique that, that's coming up. Um, so we. You know it's going to involve ones and twos, um, and what we need to think about is this box, and in particular this one here and this two here. So we know that if this square is not a one, yeah, then the one is going to have to go in this square here. That's going to be forced. This will be a one. If this square, on the other hand, is not a 2, then the 2 will have to go here. Just remove the 9s there just to illustrate what I'm saying. So, whichever cell, whichever value I should say, this cell takes, it forces a number into one of these two cells. And that has a really beautiful effect in terms of what's going on in columns 2 and 3. Because if this is a 2, Therefore, this is the one that interacts with this one, and that would force a one into this position. But if this is a one, then this is going to be a two, and the interaction with this two here is going to force a two into that position. So in fact, this one-two pair here is mirrored into this position here as a one or a two because of this, this lovely piece of logic around the corner. So I'm calling. I'm going to call this cell a Schrödinger cell, just because we don't know whether it's a one or a two, but we know it's it's one or the other. We can't tell which. A bit like the cat in the box, we don't know whether it's dead or alive. Um, and the quantum physicists would say it's both. But I'm not saying this is both a one and a two, but I'm certainly saying it's it's one or the other. Now, once we get to this point of the solve, all of a sudden we're uh, starting to cook with gas because you can then see, let's take this 4 for example, um, once the 4 can't go here, 
we know there'll be a 4 in one of these three squares and that that'll allow us to place a 4 immediately to actually place a big number 4 in there. And our pencil marks will allow us to place a 3, etc. So this is the crucial stage to solve this puzzle. It comes right at the beginning of the solve on a difficulty factor 100 puzzle. And I'll just show you um, why I think this is incredibly interesting piece of logic. So this is about probably the most popular online solver of Sudoku's. Um, it has a whole load of very, very complicated techniques down this right hand side here. Um, and I've, I've put this puzzle into it. So we'll just see what it, what it finds. So it's found some, okay, it's found some pointing pairs there that I think I think when when it highlights a number in yellow that means it can eliminate it from the logic it's using so you yeah so it eliminates the twos here what does it do next and it's going to eliminate a three over here look okay and now it's onto an x cycle and this x cycle is going to allow it to eliminate a one in this square okay uh, now another x cycle to eliminate a two in this square Whoa, now another X cycle to eliminate two in this square. So it's, it's not making rapid progress despite using some ever more exotic techniques. A grouped X cycle to remove a one in the center there. A grouped X cycle again to remove a two in the center. Another grouped X cycle to remove a number that's really not helpful to the solve. An alternative inference chain, which looks like it's sort of starting to get to the right point, but it's not limiting this cell to a 1 or a 2 here. It's eliminating a few numbers here, and it might get to this 3 up here, but it's not its not the beautiful logic that allowed us to find this 1-2 pair straight off the bat. And that's why I think this this technique is, is quite innovative. Um, I'm sure in the comments we might get some uh, people who've seen it's like before, but I haven't, and I thought it was incredibly beautiful, so I wanted to share it with you. I hope you enjoyed this edition, um, and please do leave feedback. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. We really appreciate that, and we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptid.